Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. I'm making this video and I want to thank my friend MK Vine for actually sending me the article with which I will be responding to. Uh, the article has nothing to do with Islam, which as some of you might be noting, might be refreshing. Uh, this actually has to do with the Dead Sea Scrolls and actually the ASEANs most importantly as who were the authors of the Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm going to be posting the article in the description section and just as a warning, I'm not going to be quoting it word for word because I don't have time to read the entire article to you. I'm just going to tell you what her main points are, the scholar in question here, and then I'm going to elaborate and counter with some of the issues I see with her argumentation. The title of the article is Scholar Claims Dead Sea Scroll Authors Never Existed. And the biblical scholar who we're talking about, actually I don't even want to call her a biblical scholar, she, uh, according to the article, her last name is Elihor, E-L-I-O-R, and she is a she teaches Jewish mysticism at Jerusalem's Hebrew University, and she claims that the Essenes were the fabrication by the by Josephus, the first century uh, Jewish uh, Jewish Roman historian, and that it was through his faultly reporting that we now have this myth that there were these people uh, in Qumran. And she makes the assertion that she finds it strange that out of the 900 scrolls found in Qumran, that the Essenes never mention themselves by name. They don't actually say, we are the Essenes. Well, I won't have to actually deal with that argumentation. Another, an actual biblical scholar later on in the article counters her, and in my humble opinion, and you can be the judge for yourselves, I think he nails it really perfectly by showing this um, mysticism teacher that... Um, she herself should actually go back and read the Dead Sea Scrolls and kind of come to a better understanding of the language in which the people of Qumran use metaphor and things of this nature. Now, she says about Josephus that he, quote, wanted to explain to the Romans that the Jews were all losers and traitors and that there were many exceptional Jews of religious devotion and heroism. You might say it was the first rebuttal to anti-Semitic literature. She adds, he was probably inspired by the Spartans, for the Romans that the Spartans were the highest ideal of human behavior, and Josephus wanted to portray Jews who were like the Spartans and their ideals and high virtue, end quote. Here's an issue I have with her theory on two levels. One, she's acting like Josephus, like it was literally the goal of Josephus to say to the Romans, oh, you know, my people, the Jews, they're, they're not all bad people. They're not all zealots. They're not all rebellious people. Problem is, the, she, she's acting like Josephus was the first person to tell the Romans about the Jews. I, I don't know if this woman knows her own history, but the Jews had been citizens of the Roman Empire for years. Years, mind you. And I find it hard to believe that Josephus literally was thinking to himself, you know, I really need to set the record straight here. I really need to tell the Romans how good my people are, and that we're not all a bunch of, you know, um, essentially, we're not all uh, a bunch of, you know, essentially rebels and traitors of the state. I don't think Josephus even was in mind for that, considering that he probably knew that what the Romans knew, that they weren't all like that. The, the Jews were of a very, very um, diverse group of people. And Josephus even mentions that he mentions um, the uh, the understanding that they were that there was a diversity amongst many of the Jewish groups. So I, I find her theory really lacking. She also said that he that that he might have patterned the Essenes off of the Spartans, who the Romans respected. Again, if you look at the Spartans and who they were, they are really not like the Essenes at all. Uh. Here we are really talking about apples and oranges now. To compare the Essenes to the Spartans is ridiculous. Maybe she's confusing the Zealots with the Spartans. Okay, maybe that because maybe you could pattern uh, what happened with the with the two Jewish revolts after the heroism of the Spartans. So maybe she's confused. I don't know. But continuing on, then. Uh, essentially, she, this is where I found her really hilarious. I'm going to quote the article. Early descriptions of the Essenes by Greek and Roman historians has them numbering in the thousands, living communally, the first kibbutz, 
jokes, Eli, are a place for learning. And forsaking sex, which, quote, goes against the Judaic extortion to, quote, go forth and multiply. Says Elihor, it doesn't make sense that you have thousands of people living against the Jewish law, and there's no mention of them in any of the Jewish texts and sources of that period. Okay, end quote. Here's the thing. Um, I really think that, 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 that she needs to read Josephus some more. Seriously, I think she needs to read Josephus some more. Um, I have the complete works of Josephus right here. And here are some of the assessments uh, she makes. First off, she says that she cannot believe that, that they were in the thousands. And she says she cannot believe that they would be against the law. Meaning, uh, and in the context of the article, what, what it's referring to is against the command uh, of God to state that... Um, to be fruitful and multiply. The commandment given to, to Noah after the flood. And now I have uh, my stone edition of the Torah here, and there are actually two different opinions done. Uh, Rushdie says that this is a commandment to be fruitful and multiply. However, the commentary does say that uh, uh, another scholar uh, makes it clear that this is something that, this is actually a blessing from God, that God is actually saying, you know, be fruitful, multiply, but this isn't like you're breaking a commandment, this is essentially a, a human condition that God bless, that yes, because you multiply, you are, uh, because you have children, you are actually helping with the multiplying of the planet again after the, the flood, which he did. So, um, however, she overgeneralizes. First off, there's a misconception that the Essenes were only in Qumran. Uh, according to Josephus, and I'm really referring to the, his section on the War of the Jews, book number 2, chapter 18, uh, excuse me, chapter 8 of book 2, sections, starting at section 1, the Essenes were everywhere. They were not only in Qumran, they were in every city in, in, the, in the Promised Land, as according to Josephus. They weren't just this air, the, these people in Qumran, there, excuse me, there is a doc, there is a doctrine of them wandering, and it really reminds you of not only John the Baptist, but James, the brother of Jesus, and Jesus Christ himself, with their ideology. But they were everywhere. They wandered with each other, uh, only having the, 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 some small food, some, a knife for protection, uh, meager clothing of, of white linen, and, and some sandals. They were very pious with what they did. However, one ignorant mistake this woman makes is when she says that they were against the law, i.e. they were against having children. In Article 13 of Book 2, Chapter 8 of Josephus, he writes, Moreover, there is another order of Essenes who agree with the rest as to their way of living and customs and laws, but differ from them in the point of marriage as thinking that by not marrying they cut off the principal part of the human life, which is the prospect of secession, Nay, rather, that if all men should be the same opinion, the whole race of mankind would fail. And then it goes on to essentially say that they do get married. They have children. Hmm. Fascinating. Very fascinating. I would say this woman just generalized all the Essenes, and she has been refuted. Moreover, she comes up with her own opinion that she believes the Essenes were actually just some renegade, parts of a, a renegade priestly caste called the Zadoks. They were expelled by the Greeks in uh, 2nd century BC. She says those were, the, those were the people who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. See, the problem, the problem with her argument is that she cannot deny that the Dead Sea Scrolls, and she, at the end, she condescendingly says, well, you know, you should read on 39 volumes of the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, they, the, the proof is there, you know, things like this. Um, I think the woman needs to read Josephus again. And even though she does make the very arrogant argument that, um, that, that basically she says, usually my opponents have only read Josephus and the other classical references to the Essenes. Well, okay, even if that's true, and I have read the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's been a while, but even if that were true, Josephus refutes this woman from the grave. Her generalization of the Essenes for her argumentation is flawed, as Josephus proves. And so therefore, I think that by her attacking Josephus, Josephus actually refutes her. So thank you everyone for watching. Peace be with you all.